So here I'm going to show another animation that I did where I cut the entire spinal column in half, but I left the nervous system intact, the brain and the spinal cord. So down here I have highlighted in blue uh, C7. So if you count down, there's 1, C2, C3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then there's T1. And what I have here is an animation that uh, shows this. Now, when I'm in this program, it's a little chuggier, so I, um, I animated it out as well. But I guess this shows the concept here. So when this vertebra gets forward, the cord gets stretched. Let me just uh, get that off there. And you'll see, too, you can't see it here as well, but the brain stem is actually stretching. So let me, uh, but I want you to see the perspective here that I'm looking at. Okay, that's kind of what I'm seeing here. So when I render this out, I get something like this. And here you can see this better and it's more smooth. But notice how when this goes forward, the cord and the brain stem, which is here and, and behind the cerebellum, which is this thing, uh, the brain stem gets stretched. And that's what we're talking about with a lot of the fog effects with um, brain fog, the, the fogging effects that happen, the, the poor vision, uh, all the different symptoms that we mentioned. But this too is a big part of concussions. See, when, when people have a concussion, they, they never look at the spine other than to see if something maybe got broke. But they're always thinking head hit. Head hit from the back, head hit from the front, head, hit, head, hit, head injury impact from the top. Whatever it is, they never, ever, ever look at this. And this is one of the big things that causes the symptoms. Yes, you might have the brain bruise uh, as well, but nobody ever looks at this and ever fixes this. They just say, well, you got a brain bruise, you're going to have to wait, and then it'll heal. Uh, hopefully, you know, they tell you to wait 24 hours, you know, monitor the person to make sure there's no swelling. Now, those are a great idea. I'm not saying anything's wrong with that, but nobody ever looks at this. So here's the deal. If Remember, there is no muscle to pull these bones backwards once they get shoved forward. There's no muscle that can self-correct that. It just doesn't exist. There's nothing to exercise. There's nothing to stretch. So when it gets shoved forward, it is stuck there. Now, does a blow from the back or from the front cause that to go forward? Well, both of them will cause that to go forward. If you get hit from the back, obviously you can push all of these forward, including C7. Okay, so that can do it. But if you get hit from the front and your head goes backwards, that causes a leveraging effect, which will push this thing forward as well. Now, I know it's not showing it here. This is the after effect. The, you know, when you got hit, your head would fly back. These would all go back with it, and it would leverage this bone forward. So picture you know, a little arrow going down like this to leverage this forward. And then the result afterwards is this. Make sense? So even if you got hit from the back of the head, your head might go really far forward, pulling this forward because it's attached to everything else. So both effects can cause this. And that's what people don't realize. They always think of the brain injury, and, and, and that may happen. But you know how many people don't hurt their brain at all, yet have all the symptoms of concussion? I mean, this can happen just by hitting your head on a cupboard door when you're standing up, you know, if you were bent down or, or hit, you know, hitting your head coming out of the car where he hit it on the door frame, not of the actual door, but the frame, you know, that is part of the car door, our car uh, roof. Um, all those things all smack this thing forward and it gives you the symptoms of concussion. When you go to your doctor, they explain, oh, you have a, just have a concussion, you have all the symptoms of it, therefore, you know, monitor for 24 hours, all a great idea. But many people have not hit their head hard and, and still have all the symptoms of this. And it, it, it may not ever really go away. You may be dealing with the symptoms of that forever because this never gets fixed. So that's what's going on there, and I wanted to explain that um, in more detail. Okay, so I'm going to show the classic gooseneck type movement of having a very forward C7 or T1. Okay, so I'm just going to be standing here, and you can tell my head's already far forward as I'm relaxed. It's, it's already forward. But when I take a deep breath in and relax, my head just slides forward almost like a drawer coming out and you can see I slump right away but then it also slides forward like the drawer or gooseneck type movement it just jogs forward so it should look like this okay where it doesn't go anywhere 
Now I can't, I, I can't pull my head back more without it looking weird. And this is what everybody thinks postural you, posturally you should do is pull your head back like that. But it should just be back on its own if the C7 or T1 is back at its position it should be. So here I clearly have a big issue. And my pelvis comes forward, my head comes forward, my body tilt. I have all these weird compensations that are happening. Um, but this is definitely the show, uh, showing that C7 is forward and my muscles then have to try to hold it up and hold my head back to keep as good a posture and balance as I can. And that's just not a good thing to have. Um, and this also is pulling on the brainstem. So the C7 sliding forward like this is what it looks like. And you can see that it's actually pulling and stretching the spinal cord. And therefore that's actually propagating up and pulling on the brainstem. So I feel a little foggy, a little out of it right now. Um, not bad, this is mild, it can get much worse depending on how much cord tension a person has. So again, that's an example of that gooseneck look. <sighs> okay, if I just relax, that's where my head goes. Now obviously I'm not walking around that bad. I walk around, I'm, I'm holding it back more unconsciously, but it's still doing it. So there's an example of cord tension with the C7 being forward, pulling on the spinal cord. Okay.